All right, today's the day. I'm going to San Remo to test the Spectral and the Strive one last time, and I'm gonna make a decision on what bike I'll be racing at the EWS this year. We did some laps in Molini yesterday, which is pretty sick, super steep, and kind of like techy but we're gonna go to San Remo to test them on some more rough, chopped out stuff. I've been riding them at home the last few months, but I couldn't make a decision cause the tracks there are not anything like what we race. I can't believe how many comments there are asking what bike is better. And there's a few people saying that Kenyon are deciding what I ride and what I post on social media, but this isn't true. This is fake news. I just haven't been able to make up a decision because our tracks at home are nothing like what we ride over here. And with the corona stuff, we couldn't have a team camp. So this was the earliest I could get over and try them both on proper tracks. Did some back-to-back -back laps on the Spectral and Strive yesterday in Molini. And we're just gonna make a few changes today before we head to San Remo. Tommy's making a few changes on the horse for today. Matching the Spectral and the Strive, exactly. Yeah, we accidentally ran a 170 Zeb on the Spectral yesterday and a 180 on the Strive, so we've gone 184. 184. And the Spectral was also, she was kicking back a bit in the rear. And I've got the same tune shock on here as the Strive, which is a pretty progressive tune but the spectral linkage is way more progressive, so it's too harsh. So we're gonna take a token out of that to see if that fixes it a bit. And that's about it, isn't it? That's about it, mate. Hmm. Done my email. Yeah, boy. Wrong rig. What am I riding for? Oh, we're doing this on Thursday. Just gotta check the sag on this bad boy. Get a level. Yeah, on the flat, yeah. Always check your sag on the flat. Pro tip, Tilo's pro tip. <laughs> Make sure your chambers are balanced. That's another one, mate. The what? The chambers are balanced. Ah. What, make sure the air's in both of them? Yeah, just make sure it's balanced. It's gone like past the yeah, okay. Just Good? More. Just a tickle more. Just a tickle, he says. <clears throat> Got both rigs set up where I want them. Gonna do a sight lap of each track and then two timed laps on the different bikes straight after. Yeah. Gentlemen. Yeah, three. Yeah. Three, there it is people, oh. evidence, three tokens in both Zebs. Okay, first full lap on the Strive. Let's hit it. Longer, the large? Yeah. Yeah. This is still shorter than the large vector load. First timed lap on the Strive done. Now, heading back up to do the same track on the Spectral. How did I look then? Rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best conditions to test in. Yep. This is like... <laughs> Most EWSs have at least a little drizzle. And you just gotta be careful of those snipers, eh? 
I just asked him how I looked and he said rough. <laughs> <laughs> Run two, with the spec one now. Yeah, time lap number two, we're on the specy. Full one. All right, let's do it. Spectral felt way better on the fast downhill track. Unfortunately, I didn't get a time because Dim got a flat. Sorry. He was, he was sending too hard, but probably won't go do another time because I'm starting to know the track too well, so I'm getting faster. So it won't be fair, you know? Yeah, maybe. Because I'm trying to time it like after only one practice lap, just like a EWS. But we'll go to another track and time both bikes but yeah this just felt way more stable down the long fast rough sections which is to be expected with the longer wheelbase and the slacker head angle the strive was just a bit it was hard to hold its line compared to this this held its line way better and the strive was like kind of like seesawing through the bumps and drops yeah now we go to a Tighter, more enduro y track. That's more of a downhill style track, which we don't really tend to race, but just covering all bases, you know. You know what I'm saying, Dim Dim? Yeah. I understand what you mean. Yeah. We changed the track now for more, more enduro. This one is. Mm. That's downhill race time I attack, bro. So, yeah. You know? It is rough. Yeah. Spectral smoke the drive down there, Tommy. Oh, you reckon it's the big? Down the wide open, yeah, far out. But also harder to hang on. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's more like a downhill track though, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Not many of those stages on an EWS. Alright, we're on track number two going for the first time lap. On the Becky. This one's got a few more twisty turns, a few tighter sections, and it's a bit more awkward. So, more of an enduro trail. Start the clock now! Woo! Through the fast stuff. Oh, I missed the wide line. Yeah, it's good down there. Thing just oh, whips around there. Ooh. 
Yummy! <clears throat> I haven't checked the times because I've got to go back through the GoPro. But I'm going to say the drive was faster. What do you reckon? I don't know. Don't know. It's hard to... what, do you, what do you reckon I look better on? Stripe. You reckon? Yeah, I think so. More comfy, eh? Yeah. I feel more comfortable on the drive. Yeah, but maybe we know, you know the track now. Stry, nah. You feel better. You feel very confident on your in the drive. You can just change direction on it so fast. Like the tight stuff down the bottom. Yeah, it's true. Where's the spectral? Yeah, I feel like the more you know the track, the better the spectral is. Yeah. But not really knowing the track, you can change direction on the drive so quickly and feel comfortable. But we'll wait and see. We'll see what the time says. Yeah. Yabbies. Yeah, back it up, champ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Woo! Just done the sight lap on anti-gravity. Now I'm gonna go for a timed run. I'm gonna use this drive first this time because I used it on the last lap last time. You know, you just gotta make it fair for both bikes. You know how it is. I go, my friend. Go, Dimmy, go! Yeah. See you down there. Start the time. Felt pretty good in most sections. Again, you can really whip it around those turns with the shorter wheelbase and the steeper head angle. I like that. Damn, it's good through that stuff. Day done, Dimmy. Day done, I think so. 6 p.m., bro. Big day in the office. Yeah. Large day in the office. All right, we're all done. Shout out for the shuttles all day, geezer. No worries, mate. Big day in the seat, mate. Oh, no, no I'm swearing. Terrible. <laughs> I'm wrecking the whole job, <laughs> mate. All the tracks today suited the uh, spectral more too, if anything. There was a few tight bits, but most of it's fast and rough. Like EWS gets even more um, techy. Just depends what you're riding, though. Eh? Exactly. Right. Horses for horses, different course, different horse. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's definitely a case of different course, different horse. I think that's why I like the Spectral at home, because I know all the tracks. Yeah, right. Like, if you know where you're going, I think the more laps you do, the oh, faster you get, the better the Spectral is. Okay, I'm back home. I run my nose over the data. The last couple of days has been a good test, and today was a 
final decision maker for me on what um, bike I'm going to race for the EWS. I was pretty surprised because I pretty much made up my mind at home. I was going to race the Spectral. That's why we don't even have the custom painted green new Strive build up over here. And I've just been riding my orange one from last year because I was pretty confident that I was going to be on that Spectral. It just, I just became more comfortable on it and it felt a little faster. But um, yeah, I didn't want to rule out the Strive until I could come over here and test on some longer, rougher, more technical tracks. And went to Molini yesterday and literally just took the Strive just to have there. I was going to do a lap or not even because I'd kind of made up my mind. And then when I got on it, I felt so much more comfortable on the tight, steep, techy stuff, which is what a lot of enduro trails are. So then that opened up another can of worms and I did a bunch more back to back on both bikes and then went to San Remo and did some times and some back to backs all day today. So the Spectral's a little longer wheelbase. I think it's like 20 mil longer. Um, it's just updated geometry. It's got a steeper seat seat tube. It's got slacker head angle. Um, the kinematics in the rear sh suspension, the rear linkage is like a little bit more progressive. So that bike's way better for the faster, rough, like straight stuff, like the slack head angle and the longer wheelbase really helps you to just pick your line and just swing off the back really. And the, I feel like the progressive, um, the more progressive linkage helps you carry speed through the bigger G outs and like over the chatter because you're not really sagging into your travel and bogging out. But the thing I found with this over a longer run where you don't know where you're going, it was just super tiring because the more progressive it is, the more the bike is pushing back at you and that creates fatigue in your arms and legs. So if it's a little bit more linear, like the Strive, then yeah, it might sog in and bog up or hook up a bit more, but you're not getting that feedback in your arms and legs as much, and it's a lot easier to hang on for a longer lap. And I think this is the reason why I like the Spectral a bit more at home, because you know exactly where you're going. The tracks are a little bit more, um, kind of like, you got to generate your own speed. So the progressive rear end of the Spectral gives you a better platform for pumping and stuff like that. And they're not long and rough enough to tire you out. Like even a wobber downhill, it's nowhere near as rough as these tracks I've been riding in San Remo. And I know exactly where I'm going so I can put like I know where I've got to put the bike before I even get there. And that um, that's where the Spectral like performs well when you know where you're going and you don't have to do any sudden direction changes or line changes. The thing I was most impressed about with the Strive when I hopped back on that I'd forgotten about was like how easily it changes direction and how easily it like balances when you pivot like up on the front wheel to go around a super tight turn and then sprint out. Like stuff like that, it just, I just felt so much more comfortable doing it. I was way faster than the techie stuff. And I guess this is because it's got that shorter wheelbase and the steeper head angle. The slacker updated head angle is all good when you haul an ass and you know where you're going. But if you've got to change direction, pop up high for a corner that you forgot was even there, the thing, it's not as maneuverable as the like the steeper, shorter wheelbase because slacker head angle and longer wheelbase is built for going fast, not tight technical trail. Although it wasn't quite as fast through the long, rough, straight sections as the Spectral, it was more forgiving so you get less tired and I think the time you lose on that stuff on the Strive is really minuscule compared to the time I feel like I lose on the tighter, more technical stuff on the Spectral. 
it's easier to ride a shorter, steeper bike fast in a straight line down some rough stuff than it is to ride a longer, slacker bike through some techie stuff. But yeah, there's definitely way more time to be made the other way around. So to answer everyone's question that they've been bombarding me with for the last three or four months, and I, li I haven't been keeping it a secret or anything. I literally haven't known till now. Like, no, Kenyon's not telling me what bike I've got to ride and stuff. Like, Dim's riding the Spectral. I've been riding the Strava. I've been riding both. So I, I needed to get back over to Europe to make my decision. So if you're looking to get a Spectral or a Strava, it really depends on what you're doing. Like, if the tracks that you're riding and racing are rough, fast, you know them like you do heaps of laps on them and you know exactly where you're going to be in a section before you even get there then the spectral and its updated geo angles kinematics is a better better pick because yeah it's just better on that kind of running but if you are in if you live in a place where it's super techy and or you want to race enduro ews or any enduro style races where you don't actually know the track like you get one practice lap then i think the strive is better suited and this was the main thing that i wanted to make sure i did when i tested these bikes is go to tracks that i don't know and do the timing after one site lap I'm no enduro expert, I've only been doing it for one year, but I think that's the biggest mistake you can make in setting up an enduro bike, is riding the same track over and over again and getting a faster and faster and faster setup because you only actually get one practice lap on each track at an EWS before you race. So you've got to set your bike up so that it's like it handles well when you don't know where you're going and when you can get caught out on awkward sections and when you're going a bit slower. Like when I was racing downhill, the first couple laps of a World Cup track felt absolutely horrible. Like your bike feels horrible because you're not going fast enough. It's not till the end of the first day at a World Cup that you feel like, all right, yeah, my bike's comfy because it takes that long to build up speed. So you can't go shuttling and test your enduro bike on the same track over and over again to where you know the track and you've got it dialed because obviously you're just going to go stiffer harder like it's not going to work when when you're just riding a track for the first or second lap these are just the things i felt with each bike they're super close either option would be good i'm going to go with the strive because i think the tracks today suited the spectral more and the strive that up. the ews stuff is a lot more tight and tacky and the Strive's a better bike for sort of blind racing where if you need to change direction super quick or you need to ride a real long track without getting beat up, I think it's overall, it's a better EWS enduro style race bike.